the match still, they're just going to run you down and kill you. I mean, there's, there is, it's the only way you can win a cap strat on Canyon is if it's really late game. Yeah. And you're able to just sneak something out or, but mostly conquest on Canyon networks, the cap points are used to promote movement and promote action. And that's what we've been seeing mostly today is it's been forcing movement. Uh, I don't know what the Cicada is going to be able to do, but I'm going to be uh, interested to watch. Uh, it looks like the uh, Crows are bringing a very standard Meta deck. We've been seeing it used quite a bit. The Oxides and the 2Cs are relatively interchangeable. Uh, we've been seeing the 2Cs more here, I believe, because of the Jump Jet capability. We're obviously seeing a lot of the Kodiak 3s with the Quad Ultra AC-10s. It is just so devastating if you get in front of that for too long. We've been seeing dual Kodiaks quite a bit. Uh, the Timbers can be interchangeable with some of the other medium heavies like yeah. the Black Widow we've been seeing as well. And then, of course, the Stormcrows. Let's see what kind of Stormcrows we've got over here. Uh, SRM-6 and SRM-6. So they did not go with streaks. They went for the hard-punching SRMs on the Crow side. And I'm just looking at the Cicada. That is two large pulse lasers. It's a Cicada 3F, so it does have jump jets, uh, which are always a plus on Canyon. But again, the Cicada is just an interesting mech choice. We're going to have to see so what So the do Cicada with is up on Epsilon. They're going to gather information oh, here as here the entire right Crows <laughs> team get out of there. You see that many mechs, it is time to leave. So they are bugging out. Let's see if they can get out unscathed. Timberwolf Thunder God coming around hard with the jump jets. He is getting a little bit uh, of return fire here by the rest of the INX guys who are setting up in their position. So now we have an Epsilon hard push by Crows. And then a kind of a scattered setup here with people up and down all over the place. Not yeah, looking good for a scatter Express. here. It's not going to be good. It, Crows are still coming on hard. Crows are definitely coming in hard. They are not wasting any time. They want to bring this into a brawl. Who cares if they got some mid-rangey decks? They want to use those Storm Crows to their right full. The corner here. Timberwolf with small pulse and SRMs. Thunder God there. And so these guys are definitely playing brawler with the Kodiak Overwatch. And when you've got that many brawlers in your face, it's really hard to worry about the Kodiaks. And here we go. Crows are coming around right hard. Around they are jumping on Suburban Man in the Kodiak. He is going to get shredded down pretty quick if he can skirt away on time. Yeah, we have a little micro NASCAR going on here. <laughs> Definitely ring around the Rosie. Crows in a very tight murder yeah, ball, but it looks like... Crows. Uh, now they do have a Kodiak okay. getting caught out, and yep. another Kodiak has turned and faced. I don't know if that's the best idea for that Kodiak to turn and face. He is getting pounded right now. The rest of his team's kind of left him alone. Suburban Man it has gone down for Inex, but the Timberwolf actually down to 52% there. He is the focus target, and we are even and up at one each. It's a very even match right now, but I think the Crows have the what advantage of the position. They've got mechs all around Inex here. In terms of uh, uh, of percentages, uh, Inex has some high percentage mechs, but it looks like they are being focused down a little bit Another better by the Crows. Down. Elusive Man down to 45%. A lot of this damage on the Crows is very spread out. They are not getting focused as much, but it is two all now. Self-destruct for Lord Crasher, and it is actually up for the Crows right now. And, and that's now it starting is four to swing to two. a little it bit looks harder. Like the crows are starting to pull out of this one. Yep, this is not looking good for Inex. It is starting to fall quick. There's so many hurt mechs on the field, though. Yeah. But I don't and think the last one is, is the painful. Cicada. The last one is the Cicada. So it, there are a lot hurt mechs on the field, but Gunner23 in the Oxide is the freshest, and he is running the Cicada down. He is not going to allow. Uh, the Cicada to get any shots on any of those weak Kodiaks out there, so they will Yeah, they and that is not off. a matchup I would like to see if I was in a Cicada. Oh man, he is just running for his life, but he can't get away. He cannot get away. Three of the freshest mechs down in the valley. Well, these guys up here, the Kodiaks, just tanking really well, getting hurt down low. This guy yeah. even has his arms still. Beautiful Fantastic. job tanking by Crows. I mean, the whole time that match, it really felt like Inex had the damage percentage advantage. They did in terms of Inex had healthier mechs, but what I did notice is comparatively to the Crows, Inex had a couple mechs that were getting focused down very yep. well. I think the Crows had better focus during the brawl. Looking at the Crows' percentages, you think, oh, they're not doing too good. A lot of them are hurt. Well, that's spread damage. Every single one of their mechs is getting hurt, but they're not dying. And that is the key to a successful brawl is the focus fire. Doesn't matter how much damage you do if you can't get the kills. 
Elusive Man doing 609 damage. He definitely did work, but his team needs to back him up on that. D Dianison in the Timberwolf also pulling 539. They did damage. Uh, spread it a little too Suburba much. Man, though, being the first one down, only pulling 92 with a Kodiak 3. You got to get more out of that mech. And, and it was because during that little bit of a rotation, they were doing the ring around the Rosie. Yep. Suburba Man is the guy who got caught out in the back. And uh, you called out the two Kodiaks for the Crows turning around and facing. It actually seemed to work out pretty well with them. Uh, they tanked very well. They stopped the rotation. They allowed the rest of their team to catch up and start backcoring, and they basically forced a pincer on Inex and got into a massive murder ball right in the middle of the ramp. So well played by the Crows. It was closer, though. Uh, it, was, it wasn't it was exactly what I'm looking for in terms of uh, a nail-biter, of course, but the two Kodiaks were probably one, two shots off from a good good coring. And then, uh, of course, then you've got the, the Jenners and the Stormcrow still fresh and ready to go. So, so well played. Uh, Inex, obviously... Has some work to do, but well fought. Um, if they come I think back if they and could watch this footage, up on the focus a little yeah. bit. They, they, that was pretty good. If they're watching right now, that is the number one advice I have for you guys right now: is try and get that focus. And it's hard to focus when you're doing the ring around the rosy crap, especially when suddenly you come around the corner and there's two Kodiaks in your face, and then you're getting backcord by the yep. tail whipping around and hitting you. It's a very tough position to be be in there. Uh, so what they could have done differently, it's it's very hard to say. But really, it comes down to they didn't get the focus as well as the crows did and well played by the crows so that was a that was an exciting match though that was a fun one to cast i hope you guys enjoyed it too and we will see you guys after the break in about 16 minutes so see you then <laughs> 